Thomas Safright is a cancer researcher and in today's episode I will share with you this guy's top 10 tips for health. Jumping right into it, the number one tip is the ketogenic diet. If you are watching this video, you definitely have heard of the ketogenic diet. You basically decrease your carbohydrates and your protein intake in order for your body to start producing ketones from its own fat. This is incredible not only because you will burn a lot of fat, but the carbohydrate restriction causes a decrease in cancer rates. Whether keto is the optimal diet for most people or not, we don't know yet, but it sure is million times better than the standard American diet and it sure has many implications. I personally have been on a ketogenic diet for over a year and I swear by it. Number two is to restrict your overall calories on keto. So if you find it hard to eat so much fat, uh, Thomas believes that you don't have to. You don't have to eat so much. And in fact, restricting your calories will make you lose weight way faster than you otherwise would. Although this is questionable because it will also cause your metabolism to slow down. But I would say that the main benefit of caloric restriction is longevity. It will make you live longer. So consider restricting your calories not too low because if you eat too little calories you will not be able to repair your muscles properly or to build muscle and muscles are also important for longevity and health in general. Number three are longer fasts. Thomas is especially a fan of three to five day fasts. I'm not sure how often he himself uh, does these fasts but three to four times a year seems optimal for most people. If you are trying to lose weight it might be a good idea to do a three day fast every month even. Besides fat loss, the main benefit of fasting is autophagy or dead cell eating. You are basically cleaning your body from all the dead cells and all the things that are ruining it. So longer fasting also seems to be incredible for longevity and it's not something that you should fear. Number four is to be aware of chronic inflammation because it likely is the number one underlying cause of cancer. Fortunately, if you are a healthy individual, I don't think you necessarily have to test for C-reactive protein and other markers of inflammation, because you will feel it when it's too high. But try to make dietary changes and exercise changes and sleep changes that will in effect lower your inflammation, because it's incredibly important. I personally believe that chronic inflammation is the number one root cause of most diseases, if it's not bad sugar spikes. Number five is to avoid talcum powder, because it produces inflammation, which leads to cancer, which leads to neurodegenerative diseases, which leads to many problems and to you not feeling good. So it's not worth it. Number six is that even if you are not on a ketogenic diet, still try to limit your sugar to as little as possible. Because sugar causes massive insulin spike, which also supports the chance of cancer and cardiovascular diseases and neurodegenerative diseases. Sugar is horrible for you, added sugar specifically. Now what I do like about sugar is that when you eat it, you can at least go for a walk or drop a few burpees to lower the insulin spike, which will kind of lower the damaging effects, which is not the case with stuff like polyunsaturated fatty acids. If you drink sunflower oil or canola oil, there is nothing you can do about it. It's just gonna go to your body. But yeah, sugar is not good. And if you are on a high carb diet, you rather want to get your carbs from starches or fiber. Number seven, we have don't complain about your genes. Yes, it is the case that genes do play a big role on our health, but it is what it is and we already have these genes and there is nothing we can do about that. So let's instead focus on what we can change and let's actually utilize those genes and work with them. For example, if type 2 diabetes is very common in your family, then do something about it and take proactive action to decrease your chance of getting type 2 diabetes, right? So get your genes tested, utilize them and make changes in your lifestyle based around those genes but then don't stress about those genes. They are what they are and there is no way we can change that 
and stress is just gonna make us die even faster because of cortisol. Number eight is to optimize your mitochondria. Mitochondria is so important for you because if it doesn't function properly, then you cannot really produce enough adenosine triphosphate, which is the fuel for your whole body. So if the health of your mitochondria is poor, you will not feel energy. You will feel tired all the time. So I encourage you to work on improving your mitochondria, be it via diet, be it via your exercise or via sleep. All these are important factors for your mitochondria. Number nine is to only use chemotherapy when there is no other option. If you are in the later stages of cancer and chemotherapy seems like the only way, then go ahead. But the problem with chemotherapy is that it radiates you. It does a lot of harm to your body and to body of people, to bodies of people around you because you radiate the radiation. So try to change your lifestyle first and try keto and try fasting and do what it takes to get rid of cancer in a healthy way and only use chemotherapy once there is no other way. Which correlates to number 10 and that is to look at the root cause of your problems. Not only when it comes to health, but also your wealth and your relationships and whatever it is that you are trying to improve in your life. If you are depressed, obviously you can take Xanax or some other SSRI and it will help you, but it will not change the root cause and it will only help in the short term. And once you stop, say, taking antidepressants, it will go back to normal because you didn't dive deep into your subconscious. So when you are changing the surface, you are just postponing the problem and it will only get worse. For example, with uh, antidepressants, they are a great example of this. Yes, you take them and they are helping you, but once you get off antidepressants, then they will cause more harm than good, right? Because you don't feel as good as you did back then. So look for the root cause. Look for the underlying issue, that is number 10. And I love these tips and I would appreciate if you commented on what you think about them in the comments. The other episodes can be found here, you can check them out if you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video. I love you so much.